in St. Paul's uh, epistle to the Galatians, in chapter 3, verse 13, he says that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, mm-hmm. curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. This corresponds to a part in uh, Deuteronomy, chapter 21, verse 23, to be specific, um, that says that those who were hanged on a tree were cursed uh, by God. Um, how is it that we can understand Christ becoming a curse without necessarily overcorrecting and say, saying, oh yeah, and uh, God was, you know, completely, you know, cursing um, God and leading to this kind of uh, anti Trinitarian view of the atonement, and you know how can we how can we get this without overcorrecting? So I just yeah, I just want to know how. No, that, that's a very good question, and I'm I'm very glad you asked that. So the first thing is when we talk about blessings and cursing, uh, there's a sense in which I think we use these terms without fully understanding what we mean by them, and a blessing is, I mean, in short, like good things, and a curse is bad things. And so, quite clearly, Jesus undergoes bad things. I mean, that's obviously too mild of a way of putting it, but he clearly is accursed in that sense uh, because he's going through a a terrible suffering. We often don't want to speak in that sense. I think we're uneasy. Uh, But, you know, we could talk about Job as seemingly being accursed by God. That doesn't mean he wasn't loved by God, but it does mean that God willed that he went through some hard times. Uh, And that's something that we should take very seriously. So I think there's a, a way people read the language of blessing and cursing, and they think that the people God blesses are the ones he loves, and the ones that he curses are the ones that he hates. And so you read something like, Jacob, have I loved Esau, have I hated? Even there, love and hate don't work the same way uh, that they do when we use that term in English. So likewise, when Jesus says you have to hate your father and mother to follow him, don't literally hate your father and mother. That's actually sinful too. Uh, that rather, this is talking about blessing and cursing. It's talking about prioritization. This is talk, talking about, you know, uh, we could say divine predilection, but it's not talking about literal uh, like dislike and cursing in that sense. That's the first thing. Second, there's a beautiful homily uh, that then Cardinal Ratzinger gave on this theme in 2005. And he's looking at two lines. One is the one you mentioned from Galatians 3.13. And the other is a parallel text in 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, verse 24, in which Peter says, in his own body, he brought your sins to the cross. And that gives us a hermeneutic to understand that Galatians 3.13 seems to be uh, saying the same sort of thing, that uh, Christ is bearing the weight of our sins. And Ratzinger says this. uh, He says, Christ's mercy is not a grace that comes cheap, nor does it imply the trivialization of evil. Christ carries the full weight of evil and all its destructive force in his body and in his soul. He burns and transforms evil and suffering in the fire of his suffering love. The day of vindication and the year of favor converge in the Paschal mystery in the dead and risen Christ. This is the vengeance of God. He himself suffers for us in the person of his son. So notice there the father isn't pitted against the son. The vengeance of God is that Christ, who is God, takes on the full weight of sin and transforms it by his love and by his total gift to the father. So this is when I talk about like a good and evil way of viewing the cross, you don't want to view where the father abandons and hates Jesus on the cross, that he turns his back on him because Jesus's words on the cross, even after crying out, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? What does he say after that? Father into your hands, I commit my spirit that we know the father is actually looking in love Uh, at Jesus on the cross. And Jesus tells us that he will do so in John 10. He says, for this reason, the father loves me. No one takes my life from me, but I lay it down freely. That's what's happening. That this is something pleasing and good to God, that God the son is carrying the full weight and burden of sin and transforming it in some way by offering this on our behalf to the father. 
Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this Catholic answer, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out our live streams Monday through Friday, 3 to 5 p.m. Pacific, or find the episode after on YouTube, your favorite podcast platform, or our Catholic Answers app.